Welcome back to Broken Bobby's Transformation page. In the late 80s, I became involved with drugs and would eventually become part of that lifestyle of trafficking, addiction, and violence. Over the next 20 years, I would be in and out of jail and prison. If you're thinking about trying something or you're dealing with addiction, your life don't need to go down the same path mine did. I hurt a lot of people, both physically and emotionally. These are my stories of how I transformed my life, and you can too. Let's. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see by the title and the thumbnail, it's a dirty game. It, this is an Inland Empire story, San Bernardino, and this is a story of three brothers that I became acquainted with when I was young. Uh, I was already hustling myself, but these guys were hustling on a whole nother level. And I'm going to tell you how I got involved with them and uh, some of the stuff that happened. And, uh, you know, we'll get into that. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash that like button, drop a comment, and be sure to share the video. If you support me, it really helps to support the channel. So share the video and hit that notification bell and click that bell so that anytime I drop a new video or I go live, which I should be doing later on tonight, uh, you will be notified and you can jump on if you want to. Also, you can become a member of the channel. Hit that join button and look at the different levels of membership. I'm still kind of tinkering around with that a little bit, trying to figure out what uh, I'm going to do. There will be some exclusive content and possibly some giveaways with that as well. So uh, check that out also. So it was... Three brothers. Uh, I'm going to change the names around a little bit because I haven't talked to these guys in a long time. And, you know, I'm not really going to put them out there like that. But uh, the first brother was, he went by Joe Cooley. Then he had a brother, Fernando, and another brother, Jose. Now, Joe Cooley, he was real down to earth. Uh, he would end up in a relationship with my sister, and that's how I got acquainted with him. Uh, he was doing big things, and it really showed. Driving, you know, the latest sports cars, and, you know, had a pocket full of money. And uh, I wanted to, you know, find my way into that situation, because I was young and broke, basically. So then his brother, Fernando, he was sort of the enforcer of the family, big guy, uh, would take care of business. Then the third brother, Jose. Now, the, I always thought this guy was real stuck up, like he thought he was better than everybody. And, you know, he's making a lot of money. He had a lot of ego. So, you know, I, I guess I get it to a certain extent, you know. But one thing about all three of these brothers is they were all bawling. And if you don't know what balling is, like, they, they were doing the damn thing. Uh, money, cars, females, uh, on top of the world. Like, nice cars, like lowrider trucks, BMWs, Cadillacs, like, all modern stuff, not old stuff. And, uh, you know, they, like I said, they had money and they had the sack. So, uh, I was fascinated, to say the least. Now, one thing about all three of these guys is they were all with the gunplay. But I would go on to find that I didn't like their style of doing things. They were real flashy with them, waving them around, you know, doing that sort of stuff. And I would go on to, as my cr criminal career progressed, I would go on to figure out that, you know, you shouldn't maybe... The presence of it should be known, but you don't pull it on somebody unless you plan to use it, is what I would go on to learn later. Because if you pull it on somebody and you don't use it, they may come back and use it on you. And you'll see how that works as this story plays out. So, the brothers had some work going out of town. And by work, I basically mean narcotics. And... Jose, the stuck-up one, he was the first one to go up into Vegas and make some connections where 
you know, what they were buying in San Bernardino was exponentially more valuable up there. You just had to transport it there. And so, yeah, Jose was the first one to do it, and he was having relative success up there. You know, he would buy something that was $1,800 down here, and he would take it up there and make in the vicinity of $10,000 for it. So he was taking care of those flips, and he was handling business, you know? So then Joe Cooley decided he was going to get into that mix of things, and he had a ton of success. Like, he, he just hit the jackpot with that. Like, he had several people up there that were basically running for him, distributing for him, if you will. And, <clears throat> like, the money was amazing. I I would go on to become a part of that network of transporting stuff from San Bernardino to the Vegas area. Now, in as Joe went up there and started finding his success, jealousy kicked in. And Jose, whether, you know, like, I don't think there was any concrete proof, but me and Joe were making a run up there one night, and we were going in, he had a Camaro, a new Camaro. And ironically, the Camaro overheated before we got out of town. So we came back and switched cars. So now we're in this Mazda 2500, you know, like one of it's like one of those low rider trucks. It had rims and was lowered and everything, music. And so we ended up going in that. And that was the bumpiest ride of my life, I swear. Like 200 mile journey and felt every bump along the way. <laughs> but the point I want to stress with this one is as we were coming into Vegas when we got to the exit that we were due to exit on we seen several of the Metro PD cars lined up on the exit ramp and they're just watching the cars coming off the freeway so Joe says fucking Jose and I'm like what do you mean, you know, like, we're loaded up with product, you know, uh, we got a piece and everything, and he says, he told, he told, they're, they're looking for the Camaro, they don't know that we're in this truck, and they didn't harass us, they just waited there, and, like, that was one of those moments where I was like, oh my god, like, all these cops are waiting, so he was convinced that his brother had dropped a dime on him, over jealousy because Joe Cooley was doing better than him and you know it's just mind-blowing that something like this would happen and on several occasions I seen Joe Cooley playing with the thing with people making idle threats ultimately you know, if you don't have my money, then I'm going to come back and pew, pew, type of thing. And like I said, you know, I ended up learning a very valuable lesson out of, you know, being with these guys and seeing this stuff. Well, one week we were heading up there and we got stopped. We were somewhere between Barstow and the state line going to Nevada and we got pulled over and they basically they were looking for what we had they the the cop wasn't stupid he was up on game and he said i know what you guys are doing but they weren't able to find what they were looking for and fortunately for me the nearest canine unit was over an hour away so they had to let us go but there was definitely stuff in the car that could have got us a lot of time in prison and so we make that delivery, we touch down, and ultimately what would happen is the next week I would tap out and say, hey, you know, that was a close call. Like, I'm like 18 years old at this time, so I'm just a kid. I'm all bright-eyed at the fact that I'm making $1,000 a week, and, you know, I, I think I'm one of them, basically, but I'm not. I'm just a mule, basically, and somebody that's holding on to one of those things in case things get crazy. 
and you know i at the time i think yeah i'm down to to pull it but i don't i don't know if i was honestly and i'm glad i never got put in a situation where that became necessary but you know they gave me one of those things and basically in some situations they said if things get crazy just start shooting and you know luckily by the grace of god i never got put into one of those situations but so okay back to what i was saying we get pulled over they don't find anything the next week i tap out so someone else taps in and drives and joe cooley goes to somebody's house that owes him three thousand dollars is what i heard and like i said he liked to make idle threats hey if you don't get my money i'm gonna come have to take care of you type of thing and you know mix meth into the equation so you know if you're using and somebody's telling you that you know it may seem like i need to take action and that's what this guy did this guy was as i understood a he had went to high school with joe cooley and when joe cooley showed up to collect dude opened up the door and opened fire on joe cooley hit him twice point blank range with a 45 and the other guy I, I i guess he didn't use that thing to fight back but what he did was he scooped him up got him in the car and drove him to the emergency room where he he would live and you know lucky for him that he did because a lot of people don't survive those types of situations well you know he, he Ultimately, he, he would end up in a wheelchair, and he's still in a wheelchair to this day. Now, as to the other brothers, the Fernando, the enforcer, would go on to be convicted of a commercial burglary of a gun store is what I heard. I think he just got, he, he was using too much, and he was too intrigued by them things. So, <clears throat> he he would get busted with like 25 of them you know somebody must have told on him because they ended up raiding his house and they found product and all of the stolen property that they were looking for that you know came from that gun shop basically okay so let's recap a little bit so joe cooley would get shot and end up in a wheelchair fernando would end up getting popped over uh that commercial burglary of the gun store and he would end up getting like 10 years or something and jose the you know the stuck up one that i mentioned he would end up getting popped on a conspiracy to manufacture and he would end up getting like 20 years in the joint and you know i tell all of these stories to make the point you know, these three were on top of the world. Like, I looked up to these guys. These guys were legends to me getting started. You know, like, I wanted to be like these guys. But as time went on, and all of this happened within the course of maybe two years, these guys went from having the nicest cars and pockets full of money and so much influence in the streets to one being in a wheelchair for the rest of his life and to heading to prison for long terms and i guess the point i'm making with this is you know it don't last forever you know there's very few people i know that have been involved in the game and never got busted that retired there's no retirement plan for drug dealers so you know the thing is when you're using especially you tend to try to justify that i'm not as bad as the other person or you know i need to keep hustling because i need this money but when it's easy come it's easy go and if you're lucky you walk away broke if you're not lucky you may end up in a wheelchair or you may end up on a long-term commitment in the department of corrections so you know th that's my video for the day i hope you guys enjoyed it Family, fitness, and freedom are the things that help me to get my life back together and not have to worry about this sort of stuff. And, you know, whether you are 
snorting lines or putting it directly into the vein, it's all addiction. It's all addiction. And, you know, you have to just, you have to take that first step and say, hey, there's a better way. Uh, let me find a meeting. Let me find something that's going to turn my life around and make things better. So that, you know, that's what it is. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Like I said, I'm going to try to be live later on tonight. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you enjoy these sort of stories, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we just recently passed 1,200 subs. Thank you, guys. Salute out to you. I appreciate you guys. So uh, don't forget to subscribe. Like the video if you liked it. Hit the thumbs down if you didn't like it. Either way, drop a comment and share the video. It really helps to grow the channel. Don't look at the mountain. Just start climbing.